What's up, guys? Blade Duggan here from Halloween Lives, the podcast of Michael Myers, joined, as always, week after week by my brother, Austin. Welcome to episode number 79. Man, we are rounding the corner to episode 80. 79 episodes in this show. We're just getting started. How you doing tonight, man? Welcome to episode 79. I'm doing good, man. Uh, happy to be here with you. Hopefully, we're we're praying for no technical difficulties. Last episode, we did have some. We made it work, yeah. though. But but goddamn, the internet is not on our side. No, it's not. And and you know, it's one of those things. While while we're recording this, if we just start experiencing technical difficulties, it is what it is. Um, it's a lot easier to adjust and and kind of change things up on the fly if you and i are together we ran into those technical difficulties during our live 75 show um for anybody who watched that and uh it just it is what it is it's the nature of the beast it's what we do uh but we're back we're still rolling here for episode number 79 this is going to be a very similar episode to a popular episode that we did uh going all the way back to episode 51 when we kind of played this like what if game what if this happened or what if that didn't happen? Um, this is an idea you kind of threw my way and you said, hey, we should do another episode on this. And I was like, yes, let's do it because there are so many what ifs in this franchise. And I'll be honest with you. I don't necessarily remember what my what ifs were for episode 51. I did not go back and watch that episode or rewatch that episode. Um, so I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty positive that my picks or my what ifs tonight or today are not going to be uh, the same as what I had in episode 51. So did you go back and listen and rewatch or whatever to figure out what the hell's your ears were? No, I still have my notes that I did for um, episode 51 up. So I was able to do three new ones, um, but I'm glad I did uh, because I would have definitely repeated. Um, so you're probably better than me in that aspect. I needed to go back and check. Um but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be bringing three new ones to the table as well. And yeah, episode 51, uh, the what if episode is one of our best episodes, uh, I think. And, and definitely like viewership wise, people definitely seem to enjoy it. Right. Um, it it's it's kind of what you got to play in in the middle of, you know, we're in between here. Uh, Halloween ends the the end of the David Gordon Green trilogy. And then now uh, what is to come, which is the TV series. Um, And I almost did like a, what if they did this in the TV series? But I think that's a different episode. For sure. Um, For sure. Well, let's get into it, man. Why don't uh, don't you start us off? Hit us with your first what if of the Halloween franchise. So this is one topic that we did discuss on a very important day last year. Uh, Just a bit. We got into it, but obviously we were kind of. Uh, you know, doing some political dancing around the question uh, back when we had Tyler Main on the show, um, you know, didn't want to get too far into it. You know, it's always questions you don't know if you can't ask or can't ask. But what would happen? What if Rob Zombie made Halloween three or Halloween 3D as it had kind of been rumored to be uh, called at that point? Um right. Now, I know there's leaks and things. I think there might even be a script that is out at this point. I'm not talking about that. I'm thinking, you know, put yourself back in the mind of of 2010, um, you know, shortly after um, Halloween 2 came out in theaters. um, And it was very much in the play. You know, this is... Uh, this is kind of what we're going to do now is just keep going down this Rob zombie timeline. Um, you know, I have a lot of different thoughts as, as, as to what I think Halloween three could be. I think obviously you end Halloween two, um, with now I I've mixed up which ending is the director's cut and which ending is the regular cut of that movie now. But I know Michael quote unquote dies similar to how he dies in Halloween four, uh, by being blown away by, you know, uh, a dozen cops and, and others that are, that are shooting at Michael. Um, then Lori goes, picks up the mask and, uh, dons it. And I believe she ends up getting shot as well. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. She, yeah. She puts the mask on and yeah, she ends up taking a round of the chest. Yeah. So it's, it's very much, you know, the idea that there even was a Halloween three and, and Tyler main was in talks to be Michael Myers yet again, um, in Halloween three means 
somehow we were getting, you know, Michael Myers back after that scene. And, and, you know, obviously we kind of open things up to the supernatural, um, or at least some sort of like shared mental illness between the two, uh, you know, Myers children, Angel Myers and Michael Myers. Um, so, you know, Halloween three, it, it's really interesting to think about where they could have gone after that assuming it's not just like all taking place in the white horse dream world that uh, Michael and, and angel or Lori strode, um, you know, share, um, you know, you'd have to kind of retcon that ending. And I think it's interesting to think about the fact that this was at one point in play. Um, and so for my Halloween three, man, I would want to go uh, back to basics I'd always, uh, you know, love any sort of tie back to the original Halloween three. I think Rob Zombie would have done a really interesting uh, job at that movie. Um, But, uh, you know, for Halloween three, it would be it would be pretty sweet to see where the story would pick up, um, you know, with those two characters, with uh, with the story that had been set up for um, at that at that point. Um, Do you have any ideas on what, you know, you would have thought would be uh, a good continuation of that story. <clears throat> um, I, you know, I really don't. It would have been really interesting to to actually get that. I think somehow continuing on with Sheriff Brackett would have been a really interesting storyline if Sheriff Brackett would have, um, you know, if Lori would have been killed off, even though I know she wasn't supposed to be because Scout Taylor Compton, um, I sat in a, um, a Q&A with her a few years ago, uh, her and Danielle Harris, and she was talking about that it was like literally ready to go, but they were just waiting for Rob Zombie to sign on to it. They weren't going to do it without Rob, and then Rob obviously ended up saying, he didn't want anything to do with doing, you know, doing another Halloween film due to work with the Weinstein's and some things that had happened behind the scenes there. Um, but she said like they, there was a script and, and they were ready to go. Um, so somehow they would have, Lori would have had to survive. I don't know how they would have done that. Um, I suppose you never actually saw her like truly die, die. Uh, and stranger things have happened in this franchise where you see people who you think died, including, I guess, uh, a sheriff, uh, or I'm sorry, not Sheriff Brockett, uh, Loomis in, in Halloween too. Like you thought he died. Um, and, and no, I wasn't, no, I'm sorry. In, in the first Halloween, he gets his head squeezed and then yeah. you get him, you get him back in Halloween too. Um, you know, so, you know, once again, stranger things have happened. They've been able to bring people back. Um, but I would have loved to have seen like a continuation of bracket, um, and, and doing working through that. But personally, I'm glad they didn't, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If we would have gotten another Halloween three, I personally wish, and I still would like to see this, uh, don't shoot me, don't hate me, but I would love to see Rob Zombie take a crack at, uh, you know, rebooting or, or remaking, I should say Halloween three season of the witch, because he just would add that really kind of like, as long as it wasn't. Um, you know, down south, uh, Halloween three, you know, the, the, the trailer park, uh, kids and all that shit. Like as long as they would actually do like a legitimate remake and follow that same storyline, I think that would be really good. Cause Rob zombie could add a really dark, creepy feel to that. Um, but that's probably never going to happen. Um, and it just is what it is. So yeah, man, I, I don't know. It would be interesting to see, uh, and, and I don't think we'll ever see Rob zombie come back to the franchise. And, and for that, I guess I'm okay with, um, but definitely worth in, you know worth kind of discussing and talking about that because it is an interesting point yeah yeah and and the more i get into it i i've kind of come full circle at this point i feel like i hated uh rob zombie i we were i was a hater of rob zombie after halloween too um but ultimately it sounds like he really got burned in that whole deal that was going on and something that he loved is now kind of something he resents doesn't want to be a part of and that sucks a lot to to see as well. But um, definitely would have been interesting to see if we would have gotten a Halloween 3. Butterfly Effect probably wouldn't have gotten Halloween 2018, The Kills, mm-hmm. or Ends. Right. Who knows where we'd be at this point. So. Exactly. Well, we're going to uh, we're gonna go back in time to Halloween H2O. Okay. And what if, what if John Carpenter had returned to direct Halloween H2O? So... I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory here. Um, So in 1998, John Carpenter released his film Vampires. It's a decent film, but it's no Halloween. It's no The Fog. It's no The Thing. It's no, you know, I mean, these got great movies. 
vampires is, is not one of them. Um, but in 1998, that film came out. However, I did a little research on it and wanted to figure out if there was ever any discussions with, with John Carpenter to return to the franchise, given the fact that this was the 20th anniversary film that was coming out. And here's what I found. I'm just going to read this quote to you. It was believed that Carpenter opted out because he wanted no active part in the sequel. However, this is not the case. He had agreed to direct the movie, but his starting fee as a director was $10 million and he wanted a 3 picture deal with dimension films so what if john carpenter had directed halloween h2o plus we had gotten two additional halloween films with john carpenter at the helm it's a goddamn shame bro bro i mean what if man what if now steve minor did a great job with h2o Mm -hmm. um we've talked about that film a lot on this channel and and you like it more than i do i still love it it's it's like it's right in the middle for me it kind of bounces back and forth it gets a little high then it gets a little low on my list i love halloween h2o um first halloween film that i ever saw uh you know just so it, it holds a special place in my heart i guess but if we had been able to get the master the horror master classic John Carpenter to come in and actually direct Halloween H2O or whatever it would have been called. Plus, plus we would have gotten to have two additional Halloween films made by John Carpenter. Now, I don't know. I wonder if you can do this. We do me a quick Google search. It'll be f- fast if you did it to do it on your end. What is the equivalent of $10 million today as compared to 1998? I don't know how you would even look that up. But I would be really curious to know what that would be in today's money. Because to me, $10 million to get John Carpenter to direct this thing really doesn't seem like it would be that big of a deal. It would be about $19,296,000. Okay. So they would have made that money back without a doubt. Dude, for sure. For sure they would have. I mean, just having John Carpenter attached to it you know, look at look at what having John Carpenter attached to the the David Gordon Green trilogy. You know how, what that would what what that did for the franchise. Are you able? And I, I know you're looking something else up, but maybe in a second, look up. I'd be curious to know what David Gordon Green was paid, either just for one of the films or for that entire trilogy. That would be yeah, um, because 19 million. Yeah, that's a shit ton of money. That is a shit ton of money. But that film would have been huge. So I'm going to look at David Gordon Green for uh, 2018. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of, of right. information on his contract specifically, only that Halloween 2018 grossed over $259 million. And I also wanted to shout out Halloween H2O made $75 million. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you, yeah. Um, so, you know, a, a, a seventh of that, you know, would have... And and like, imagine what a John Carpenter trilogy would be. Yeah. We don't have one. We don't. We don't have a John Carpenter trilogy um, where he was able to and and went into it with a multi picture idea. Um, you know, it's it's damn that sucks. Well, and imagine this. Like, just imagine, like, literally the brainchild of who came up with this story, who created this story being able to return to this franchise after 20 years. I mean, granted he was, he was very involved. He helped write, you know, in part two and he was involved in that a lot of behind the scenes. He ended up actually shooting um, a few of the, the things that they had to go back and reshoot because the studio didn't like it. Um, So let's just say, you know, 17, he'd been gone for 17 years, but still like, Dude, that would have been absolutely huge. Um, no uh, hate for Steve Miner and H2O, but if you had to make me choose, I would much rather see what John Carpenter would have done with a sequel in 1998 and then maybe another sequel. I mean, we wouldn't have gotten Resurrection. We know that. No. fact. We would have never gotten, you know, Kung Fu, Michael, all that bullshit. Like that would have been, you know, totally out of the picture. And I think maybe in a way, we w- I mean, we probably wouldn't have gotten the Rob Zombie films. You know, again, you talk about no. the butterfly effect. We probably we almost guaranteed wouldn't have gotten because the- they wouldn't have. They probably wouldn't have remade it 
I mean, they may have remade it, but I don't think we would have gotten it when we did in 2007 because it would have been probably coming off of like the heels of the 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 you know John Carpenter trilogy that we would have gotten. Let's let's just say we got one in 1998, another one in 2000, and then another one in 2002, 2003, maybe. So I guess you could be talking four or five years. Yeah, maybe they could have done that, but I don't know that they would have done it quite so soon because I'm guessing you know, that, that trilogy specifically would have been probably pretty damn good. And they would have been worried about potentially tainting the franchise by rebooting it after bringing back the original director to direct the last three films. Um, well, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think the reason why we ended up getting a reboot so shortly after resurrection was it was kind of a reset, like, a, Oh, okay. We've gone too far. We we've screwed this up a little bit. It's time right. to uh, backpedal and try it. Something new. Um, Mm -hmm. I completely agree. I doubt whether John Carpenter would have put out three ass movies. No, um, no, it, especially with a property like Halloween. Um, oh, that is a killer. It's his baby. He would have taken care of it, man. He, he wouldn't have, he probably in as much as, you know, we talk about Halloween ends all the time in the show, uh, as much as a lot of people dislike Halloween ends as much as I like it. I understand that it was really in a way an, an experimental film. Like they, they knew when they, they were going off course a little bit and they, they knew that they were doing that and probably had an idea of doing that from basically the get go with 2018, knowing that there might be these three stories. I don't know that for a fact I could be wrong, but they, at least when they made Halloween ends, they knew that this was going to be, this is going to take some course correction. It was going to piss some people off. But David Gordon Green really didn't have any skin in the game other than the fact that they said, hey, we want you to make three films out of this deal. But you're talking John Carpenter's baby. He wouldn't have screwed around with it too much. He would have made it exactly as he would have wanted it, which is something that the fans would have probably wanted as well. So really just a huge opportunity, you know, missed opportunity there. Um, And what if, man, what if John Carpenter had directed, you know, H2O and we'd gotten two other films? That would have been awesome. I think that one is going to haunt me now for the rest of my life. That is uh, tough to hear. Um, but but going off of the thought of, of John Carpenter and his vision and what he wanted all along, um, we've talked about this a couple times, um, but I really do want to dive into the idea of what if Halloween was, um, as intended, a anthology series. We never got Halloween two. We immediately went into what you could assume to be uh, a season of the witch, um, which maybe would have been, um, you know, I, I, I really think if Halloween two didn't exist, you would have had a better audience reception um, to season of the witch, that story uh, just because it would have been clear that from the get go. Okay. Halloween one has nothing to do with Halloween two. We can go into this with fresh eyes, knowing Halloween three will be in the same way. I think it would have been really interesting and it would have been interesting to see if John Carpenter himself would have kept up with that idea. If some of those ideas like the fog or, or uh, vampires, or if any of those would have, you know, somehow correlated back to the day of Halloween, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, not to say that we would never revisit, uh, the Michael Myers character again. Um, but just that we, as you know, we talk about our two favorite things being Halloween and Halloween. One of those not being the franchise, one of those just being the spooky season. One of those being autumn, the, that, that time of the year. If, if we had a movie series to this day, that was all about, um, just that feeling that, that, that vibe that you get in the first Halloween movie tying back to the holiday. Um, I think it would have been really interesting. I, I doubt whether it would still be going on today, Um, but it definitely would have allowed the, the series to go into a lot of different genres rather than strictly um, slasher. Um, Like Halloween three season of the witch is very almost sci-fi horror. Um, and, and it would have been really interesting to see um, John Carpenter tie a bunch of ideas back to this holiday um, that obviously means so much. I think it would have kind of become cult classic type films with, you know, people saying, oh, the original Halloween was always the best. Um, obviously, we wouldn't be sitting here doing this podcast likely. Um, but it's definitely like if 
you know, if Halloween 1978 had been just a tad less successful, this is a very realistic butterfly effect that, you know, we would have just seen an anthology series by John Carpenter um, following the events of, of, you know, different Halloween stories. Um, and it's, it's, it's really interesting to think about how close we probably were to that being reality. Yeah. I, you know, my personal opinion is I, so I agree. I think it would have been a, a somewhat short lived uh, franchise. Um, I bet we would have seen three, four, maybe five films and it would have probably like gotten pushed off to the wayside because I think what, what drives people and it, Halloween three is a perfect example of this. What drives people to this franchise is Michael Myers. Right. Um, and yeah, sure. You could say, well, you know, but we got this, you got the second film and then they threw the third film in there, which just threw things off. I, I agree with all that, that definitely, I'm sure, you know, I wasn't around in 1983 to see this film when it first came out. However, um, I would probably feel much like any other fan at that time. Like, what the hell is this? Where is Michael Myers? We're, we're 45 minutes into this movie and they haven't even mentioned his name. Um, but I, I, I think why people are drawn to this franchise is specifically the Michael Myers storyline. Um, and a lot of people might be like, yeah, no shit, but it's, it's true. I don't think, I think it'd be really hard to keep up a franchise where every movie is completely different and the storyline is not the same. Like there has to be that continuity. There has to be that central, um, like vein that draws this all back to the same place, at least in my opinion, because, and, and that's, I think, you know, when I look at a movie like trick or treat, Okay, I love that movie. It's a freaking great movie. Watch it every October. It's it's awesome because you have these different storylines that are drawn into this film. However, they all come back to this one character. They come back to the character of Sam. And we see all of these characters, you know, as the film sort of progresses, these these characters are all entwined and these stories are all entwined. So if we had an anthology film and you were somehow or an anthology series that was Halloween, if you were somehow able to do that where this was all drawn in together, everything is taking place in Haddonfield, um, somehow like this, you know, maybe the ancient curse thing is is with Michael Myers is also going on, you know, over here and you know, it could be anything, right? Somehow the fog, yeah, take the fog movie takes place in Haddonfield versus, you know, you got to change the storyline a bit, but I, I think you got to have some sort of central figure or central storyline that ties all these back together. Otherwise, they really are just different movies. Like you could have said, yeah, the fog is Halloween part two and name another John Carpenter film is Halloween part three. And they're just all need to be tied back into Halloween. But I don't think just tying in the day of Halloween is enough. Yes. People like you and I would absolutely love it because we love anything connected to Halloween, but I think we are a small minority. And though there are a lot of people out there who feel like us and they love Halloween and they love anything that has to do with Halloween as in the holiday, I just I don't foresee that being a long running franchise. I think you're talking three, four, maybe five movies max. Then people would be like, OK, this just, you know, just start making different movies. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Just my personal opinion. But um, obviously we did not get that. But it is interesting to think about what if that would have happened. Right. What if we would have never gotten a Halloween two, Halloween four, Halloween five. And it, and it just had gone on without Michael Myers. It would have been interesting. We certainly wouldn't be here talking about this on this podcast. There would not be a Halloween Lives podcast out there because Michael Myers is the reason why we're here. It is the podcast of Michael Myers after all. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, the more I think about it, maybe I, I was going to say it would work as Halloween, the television series. But I think Friday the 13th, the series essentially was that. Right. Um, and you know, half of the people watching this probably don't know what Friday the 13th, the series was. So, uh, yeah, overall, a good thing. They went in the right direction, even though John Carpenter probably wasn't super pumped about it at the beginning. Um, he's sitting in a pretty nice house right now. Because I was going to say, did. those royalty checks that he's sitting on top of right now are <laughs> got to be pretty damn nice. Yeah, pretty sometimes it's, nice. It, it's good to have a second opinion. It is. It's true. What do you got for me other than rehydration? Water break. Water. I feel like I'm losing my voice. So I'm trying to drink a lot of water. 
It's all right. All right. So we had an absence of, well, I'm going to preface this before I even go into this, that I'm very, very, very glad that this did not happen. But we had an absence of Lori Strode from 1981 to 1998. Okay, so Halloween from Halloween two until Halloween H two O, we didn't see Lori Strode. We we got a picture of her in Halloween four. You had the Jamie connection that Jamie was her daughter, but really Lori Strode was out of the picture for parts four, five, and six. What if Jamie Lee Curtis had agreed to reprise her role in Halloween four, and she had been tied in and in. Halloween 4, Halloween 5, and Halloween 6. And not only was she in those three films, they had continued on with the Thorn trilogy. What would we have gotten from that? Now, there are some scripts out there um, very early on, and you can read about this in the Taking Shape books, uh, Taking Shape 2 specifically. Um, If you've not had an opportunity to read those, I cannot say enough good things. But specifically in Taking Shape 2, they do talk about some lost sequels uh, in regards specifically to Halloween 4. And originally, it was supposed to be a movie based on Laurie Strode and what was going on with her in that time period, still taking place in the late 1980s. Um, she's now living in Chicago. She was like, a, I, I don't remember if it was a photographer or an editor or something like that for like a fashion magazine. And Basically, in my mind, it's the equivalent of Jason Takes Manhattan with what's going on here as, as far as like this, the, the movie is actually taking place in Chicago. Um, and I think the way that it was described by the writers of Taking Shape is what Halloween would be like if it was on cocaine. That was actually the way that it was described yeah. because it was just like it was all 80s, all like it had like rock stars like Sammy Hagar was supposed to play a rock star in the movie and get killed off by Michael. Michael was like driving around in a red freaking Porsche. He yep. was wearing a black leather jacket at one point in the script. Very, very weird. Um, so Halloween on cocaine is probably a really uh, you know realistic opinion or view of how that film would have looked. But what if Laurie Strode had been brought back in for Halloween four and she had agreed to do continue on with the franchise and she was in there for four, five and six. How would that have changed the franchise specifically tying her into this trilogy or I'm sorry, the thorn timeline where we really got into this deep dive of, of this ancient curse and we had gotten more away from, I mean, you would have still had the brother sister angle, but I feel like the, the, like the, the thorn thing would have maybe, I don't want to say made more sense, but it would have been a lot more easy to explain like, okay, not only do you have, I mean, Jamie could have still been in it. You know, mm-hmm. Jamie could have still been, it could, still could have been Lori and Jamie. And now they're still kind of fighting off this, uh, this relative of theirs, but we're also learning about the thorn trilogy or the thorn. Yeah, I shouldn't say trilogy, the thorn curse that, that we've come to know as the trilogy uh, in four or five and six. What if, I mean, what if Laurie Strode had not disappeared basically from 1981 until 1998? Yeah, I think it's really interesting because it it definitely would have had a ripple effect down the line where I think we got like kind of the Laurie as a mother story in in the David Gordon Green trilogy. Um, But I think it would have worked really well here. And I I think obviously uh, the people involved in Halloween 4 probably wished... um, that that Jamie Lee Curtis would have reprised her role um, right. in Halloween Four. Um, I, I I think it would have been a, like kind of a natural progression. I think it would have worked in service of the um, of the Thorn storyline uh, because you got Halloween One where Lori knows nothing. Halloween Two, she figures out that's her brother. Halloween Three, but Halloween Four, you come back and not only is this your brother, you're starting to figure out you know now that you know this is your brother there's clearly a history you don't understand so now it's kind of unraveling the mystery of the background of the Myers family um and what I like about having both Jamie and Lori uh this is really difficult with Jamie Lee Curtis being also named Jamie, right, but right. Jamie Lloyd and Lori Strode what what's what's nice having both of those people there is if you introduce this idea that yeah this curse doesn't affect every living Myers, but, um, you know, essentially it's like flipping a coin. You never know what side of Myers you're going to get. And then you have, 
uh, these two characters that start off good and you don't really know which one is going to be quote unquote, like infected or possessed uh, by this curse. And you kind of, as the audience are going like, Oh shit, I think it's Lori. I think she's going off the deep end or like, Oh my God, that Jamie is like, she's displaying some kind of tendencies here. Um, and I think it would have set us up for like a really cool trilogy um, to end it off. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously, unfortunately, that's not what happened. What's funny is we did talk about this on the last what if, but it didn't did go we? nearly as good as this. Yeah, I think really? I I think my first point was, yeah, last last time it was Jamie Lee Curtis restores her role as Laurie Strode in Halloween four through six. Oh. But we didn't really get into any of like the curse of Thorn thing um, and, and how that would be affected. So. See, um, short-term memory. I'm older than you. I'm losing it already. I hey, apologize man. to the fans of the show. We're we're 79 episodes into this. If you are a loyal enough fan that you were like, "Hey, you guys talked about this in episode 51," let us know. Well, comment uh, comment below. Let us know if you were if you knew right off the bat because you're our biggest fan and we got we got to chat. That's true. Um, That's but true. yeah, no, I mean, like it is a very interesting idea. I think a lot of the people behind Halloween four, five, and six wish uh, Jamie Lee Curtis would have signed on to those movies. Um, and I think we would talk about them a lot differently than we do now. Um, but in the same respect, Jamie Lloyd uh, being our new character was kind of what breathed a little fresh air into that trilogy. Um, I do think by Halloween six, you would have had five movies where Michael Myers is chasing after Laurie Strode. Right. It gets a little repetitive. And uh, granted, it did happen later. We have five, at least five movies now where where that is the case. But you know, it's different times. There's different things at stake now. Um I'll be I'll yeah. be honest with you. Part of um I, I like, I don't love, I like the Scream franchise, but part of what I don't like about the Scream franchise is that the Sydney Prescott character is in so many of them. I don't think she's in all of them. Um, and I don't know that for a fact because I have not seen every, well, I have, I think I've seen every one of them, but it's been a while since I've seen every one of them, but she's in like at least four, maybe five of them. And I just heard she's going to be in, in scream seven again. So it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, how much do you end up? Are we just kind of regurgitating the same film over and over again? We're just changing some of the supporting characters and maybe the location, but at the end of the day, it's the bad guy in a mask chasing the same good girl, you know, survivor character, final girl. Um, like how many times can you watch that? You know what I mean? Right. I, I think, uh, yeah, definitely would have gone down the scream angle. And at a certain point I'd be even more than I do already rooting for Michael Myers. I'd be like, dude, this guy's got an ass kicked. He's died like six times trying to get this right. girl, let him mark her once. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's, uh, it definitely would have been, I, you know, we talked about how Jesus, I keep burping this episode. I'm, gassy boy gross um gross but uh i think it would have been um we we talked about how how halloween dominated the 80s uh or no friday, friday the 13th, 13th friday the 13th, dominated yeah. the 80s. um i think we would have seen a little bit more competition with with uh friday the 13th had we had the biggest character in these movies showing up right. after all these episodes for so, sure um what do you got number three Number three is uh, a bleak, and I should have put my my third and final point on a bit higher of a note. Um, but I wanted to think about the possibility of what if Halloween 2018 had flopped? Like, what if that movie um, was a mess? What if it had gone um, kind of like halloween resurrection or halloween 2 by rob zombie where it was clear that like this is not what the fans wanted um it would have been a massive letdown after huge expectations i don't think expectations had ever been higher um within the halloween series than uh halloween 2018 um you know they were bringing back all these characters um they were making such great note of how they wanted it to feel like the original Halloween. They were saying all the right things to us fans um, to the point where everybody kind of went into it like, oh, no, this is going to be amazing. And it was pretty good. Um, but had it flopped, 
Um, you know, I think obviously Halloween kills and Halloween ends were riding on the success of Halloween 2018. They didn't come out in 2015 or 2016 and say, we're going to drop a trilogy of movies. They said Laurie Strode is coming or Jamie Lee Curtis is coming back as Laurie Strode one more time to play um, and, and go against Michael Myers here in 2018. And fans everywhere just got excited. We, we were all looking forward to it. Luckily it did pan out and we did get kills and ends. Um, but had it flopped, I think we'd be in a totally worse situation than we are right now. I think right now you go, okay, people didn't really love Halloween ends or, you know, the, the ends thing is a bit divisive still to this day. We're going to go do a TV show. We're going to kind of just go do our own thing for a while. I'm sure Michael will return to the theaters again in the next 10 years. But, um, I think if we gave it another try with with Halloween 2 by Rob Zombie coming out in 2009 and Halloween 2018 coming out in 2018, um, that nine-year gap was the biggest gap we've had um, in the franchise thus far. And God, I hope that's the longest one we have to endure. But if nine years of buildup led up to a disappointment, I don't think Halloween lives. I, I agree with you. So so I, I, I totally agree. Number one, here's what I want to point out. I've got two points that I want to make. Number one, Halloween Resurrection came off of the heels of H2O, which was very successful, right? You just said $70, $75 million, whatever it grossed. Um, that's a lot of money for back then. That was a big, that was a big film. It was, came out in the summer. It was a big, you know, big time movie. Um Halloween Resurrection was almost the death knell of this franchise, right? They needed to, they they said, we need to do something to literally reboot this franchise. They put the, I'm going to reference them again. I know the last time I said this, you didn't understand what I was saying. The, the paddles as an AED, a defibrillator paddles, they needed to shock the life back into this franchise because Halloween Resurrection was so shitty that it literally was almost the death knell of this franchise. So they had to reboot with the, you know, the, uh, the, the Rob zombie films, we would not have been able to reboot this series again, the same way as they did with Rob zombie, because that had just been done 10 years earlier. Right? So if 2018 had been a flop, I think you're totally right. That is the end of Michael Myers as we probably know it. Maybe getting some shitty, you know, direct to, to video, for lack of a better term, um, sequels down the road. But I don't think we ever see another Halloween film in the theaters again, because I think that would have sent enough uh, enough of a message to the upper, you know, the brass within Trancus that they would have said, OK, clearly that this, you know, this franchise has run its course. The cycle of Michael Myers is is over. It's done. And we need to just focus on something else, concentrate on something else, because fans are smart enough to go. He's a 60-year-old dude. How much longer is he going to be around? This doesn't make any sense. Whatever it might be. Thank God that didn't happen. I mean, we've talked about this. I've said it before. Walking out of 2018, the first time that I saw it, I was a little disappointed with it. I was happy to see another Halloween film, but I was just like, man, is this really the best they could do? Um, you know, there was all this build up with Jamie Lee Curtis coming back. I hated the, the Lori Rambo Lori thing, which I still kind of do, but the film has grown on me over the years. It's grown on me a lot, but if all fans had walked out of it that way and it had spread that this is a really shitty film, don't go see it. And it had been an absolute tank of the box office that would have sucked. That would have probably been the end of this franchise. As you said, the other point that I want to make is what did we see just happen? with the exorcist trilogy from david gordon green now side note side note i'm probably one out of every other person who's ever seen the exorcist believer that i actually thought it was a okay movie i didn't hate it like i i didn't understand the hate for this film much like i didn't understand the hate for ends did i think it was the greatest movie i'd ever seen no not at all but clearly Clearly, the backlash for that film and the way that true horror fans reacted to it, unlike me, other, re you know, horror, I don't want to say real horror fans because I'm a horror fan, but other horror fans, the way that they reacted to it, 
they stepped back and said, David Gordon Green, thank you for your service. We are going to move in a different direction. Could we have seen that with the trilogy? Possibly, but probably unlikely. Believer, the Exodus Believer was riding on the coattails of the Halloween franchise. That is 100% why David yeah. Gordon Green got that job. And he he failed, right? I mean, I, I love it, or I don't love it. I, I like it, but he failed because he did not meet the expectations of horror fans, and it was not what people wanted to see. So we kind of saw what perhaps could have happened if David Gordon Green had shit the bed with 2018. That's a really good point. And that's, a, yeah, we do have a real life example of like a franchise that clearly like the first one stands above all. I think Halloween right. probably for most people, the first one stands above all and is like a beloved franchise. People will talk about uh, the exorcist for a very, very long time to come. Um, just like they'll talk about Halloween for a long time to come. And uh, yeah, it is very interesting how, um, they listen to the fans and, and yeah, I mean, I like the beginning of that movie, but, uh, it, it wasn't for me either. Um, so everybody in the comments, just relax. Um, it, it, I, I think most people are probably going to agree with you. I, I personally have not heard of one person who has really liked that film. If you, if you did like it, throw it in the comments, let me know that I'm not alone, but you know, I know we had like Marie on the show right after she had seen it. And she was like, it was horseshit. I'm not going to ruin it for you guys, but don't go see it. It's terrible. Um, like, and then I think the next night you went and saw it in the theaters and you were like, dude, it sucked. It was horrible. And, and so maybe I just went into it much like Halloween ends. Maybe I went into it with very, very low expectations because I was hearing all these negative things about it. But when I saw it, I was kind of like, I don't hate it. I, 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 it's not the greatest film. It certainly doesn't beat out the original, but I didn't think it was as so bad that David Gordon Green had to get the boot. Um, just my personal opinion. But yeah, if you guys liked it, let us know in the comments. I want to, I want to know. Yeah. Maybe getting the boot was a little tough, but you know, they had to send a message. Unfortunately, it's like a CEO getting fired. Um, sometimes it's not your fault. You're just, the, right. you're the fall guy at the end of the day. But uh, I think you got a little, I think you're a little horror optimist. And I think that's, that's a really great thing. I'm just, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, you know, I mean, you go. I'm just a, I'm a motivator, man. I'm a motivator. Okay. My last, what if, and now I'm a little nervous that maybe this is going to be the same freaking what if that I had last episode. If it is, tell me, I don't think it is, but tell me if it is. So we're going to build on last week's episode we talked a lot about Michael and his uh, sort of his the the supernatural side of him and the mask and how the the mask seems to really pull uh, this extra sort of life force out of him or into him, put it into him, however you want to look at it, that drives him. Right? What if it was revealed that Michael was in fact driven by his mask? But as many have speculated, it was because it was, in fact, a silver shamrock mask. Did we talk about that in the last episode? I, to my knowledge, no. I think okay. this is like an idea that we've thrown out there, but we've never really dived into. So right. please let me know, you know, your so thoughts. Yeah. So, so let's think about this for a second. What if we had, in fact, gotten a film, whether it be Halloween ends? I know somebody made kind of a cool little, like, you know, ends uh, and ending to ends where the mask is sitting on the coffee table and they zoom in and it's a silver, it's, you see the little silver shamrock uh, medallion or emblem on the mask. What if we had seen that in another film and it had actually been that Michael was driven by the mask? Like there's, there's been a lot of speculation on this, that it's Michael's mask. And we alluded to it last week. The book Halloween kills alludes to it, that Michael is very motivated and driven by his mask, that he's, he feels a sense of comfort from it, that it sort of empowers him to be bigger, badder and kill more. But what if it was all because not of some ancient curse, not of some uh, trying to kill his sister, but because this mask was actually designed for whoever it was that was going to wear it was going to be this serial killer uh, that we see in Michael Myers and perhaps even cross that supernatural line a little bit more that the mask makes him somewhat invincible. What if? I think you would need to somehow tie 
like if you were going to end and, and I know you're not just saying Halloween ends, but just for example, like if you were going to do that end shot of the mask sitting there at the end of Halloween ends and you pan and you see that silver shamrock medallion, I think as a director, you would need to cut to uh, whatever is it? When when did Michael murder Judith? 1961, seven, 1961, oh, 63, 63. Sorry, 1963. I think you would need to cut to that same shot of Michael's mask laying there in 2022 to the the clown mask, you know, sitting on an evidence table in 1963, sure. where that mask also has the the silver shamrock logo. Because, uh, you know, obviously that's the moment that everything changed for him. So you would need to tie that back. It would be different if, like, in... Uh, the Rob Zombie movies, he does do his first. Uh, well, he kills Judith in the um, the shape mask. Right. Obviously, he does do some killing previous to that, both in right. the the clown mask in the clown yeah. mask. Um, but if 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 you had uh, tied both of those masks back to Silver Shamrock, let's say he got uh, he got possessed by that clown Silver Shamrock mask. Uh, gets locked up in uh, Smith's Grove for however long, comes back, and he's immediately going to Nichols Hardware to go to the mask store and pick up another silver shamrock because it's that source of power. Right. I think, you know, we always talk like the mystery would be gone a little bit, um, but it's definitely like now sitting back and looking at all the different timelines. I'm okay with a timeline where that's the case. Like, I'm okay... It wouldn't be like my head cannon. It wouldn't be like the thing that I really think is happening to Michael Myers. It would be, but it would be like the the Thorn trilogy to me, and and um, just a just a different kind of pick your own adventure um, storyline for Michael Myers. I I think people would have been pissed, mm-hmm. um, just because Halloween three was up until recently kind of shit on, um. But yeah. uh, it would have definitely made a lot more sense, though, to tie Halloween three in. There would have at least then been that connection that would have truly connected Halloween three to the rest of the franchise. If it was like, oh, OK, so he got a mask from this, you know, same source that was, you know, from essentially this um, evil mask maker who was doing everything in his power to take over the world. And maybe, you know, somehow the clown mask was designed for children, but it was designed for children not to be killed, but to kill. You know, if it was designed that these, there was this little chip in these, these masks and, you know, somehow, you know, the story could go back yet in 1963 and maybe in 1963, there were, you know, a thousand kids on Halloween night that just randomly killed somebody in their family and they all what connected all of them was the fact that they were all dressed up with this clown mask that night that and, and you know, you would you would really have to be stretching it and, and try to figure that out. That's why I'm sure they never actually took that idea seriously. But the fact that you have this killer who is wearing this mask seems to be empowered by this mask. And then you have an entire movie in this franchise that is nothing but masks or talking about masks and the power that these masks hold over people who are wearing them um, in the case of Halloween three, where they're killing everybody who's wearing them. Like it's easy to draw those parallels. I'm glad they never did it. I personally would don't ever want to see like that trilogy where it's drawn into that. I would much rather see a sequel to Halloween three season of the witch where we go back and revisit that storyline. I would, I would rather see that than actually tying in Michael Myers, um, you know, into that, but it would make a lot of sense just to, just to continue to, to add those parallels back into three. If Michael was somehow wearing a mask that came from that factory again, happy it didn't happen, but what if man, what if, what if and and while you were just talking what if michael was kind of the prototype and he went rogue and they couldn't really figure out what went wrong with him um so they decided out oh, we're just going to have them kill the wearers mm-hmm. i don't know there's a lot to go off there and and uh you know especially in these uh, you know times in between news between movies uh you know the only thing that this channel has to do right now is look back and Sometimes you got to wonder, brother. Right. What exactly. If? 
Well, the only thing we don't have to wonder about is what if we will be back next week for episode 90. You can count on it. We will be back next week with episode 90. 90, 80. We'll I guess be back have, 80. You don't you do have to wonder if we're gonna be back next week for episode 90. We're not gonna be back next week for episode 90. We're gonna be back next week for episode 80. That you don't have to wonder about. We will be back for that episode. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Let us know what you guys think down below. Uh, would you have been a fan of any of these ideas? I mean, I got to say, I think the John Carpenter one would have absolutely been a grand slam. Yep. Um, but, you know, it just didn't happen. And I would still love to see uh, John return to the, the franchise at some point down the road. Doubt that's going to happen. I think the last of, of his connection to this franchise we saw with David Gordon Green in that trilogy um, not to say that they might not bring him on as some sort of like a, a producer or something just to give almost credit to him and um, allow him to have his name connected to it. But I don't think we'll ever see him involved as deeply as we did uh, anytime soon. So that's going to wrap up episode number 79. What if any of this stuff had actually happened in the Halloween franchise? My name is Blaine Duncan. That is my brother, Austin. And we'll see you guys next week for episode 80. Episode 80. We'll see you then.